Hello and welcome to the New Testament Daily with me, Jerry Dierman, where we read and talk through a chapter of the New Testament every single day. I'm glad you're here because reading God's Word daily will change your life. You can also help others find out about this resource and stay in the Word daily when you click like on this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, or share this link with others. So let's pray and then we'll jump into God's Word. Father, thank you so much for the precious, written, inspired, living Word of God. And I pray that by the Holy Spirit, each of us would hear exactly what you want to say to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Revelation chapter 9. Then the fifth angel sounded. So remember that we're in this progression, and I believe it's, it's chronological in terms of the seven seals and then the seventh seal opens up the seven trumpets, and then the seventh trumpet opens up the seven bowls. And so now we're in the middle of the trumpets here, and we get to this verse that says, Then the fifth angel sounded. Sounded what? Sounded the trumpet, the fifth trumpet. So the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to the earth. To him, notice this says to him. So stars we've seen can be angels. Stars can be men, like we saw in chapter 1, right to the angels, and chapters 2 and 3, to the angel of the church. And we believe that those messengers are actually the bishops or the overseers. We might call them today pastors of the churches of those cities. Uh, or it can be a combination of these things. But this says, The fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to the earth, to him, to the star, was given, so we believe this is an angel, to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. Is there really a bottomless pit? That's not just a metaphor. There really is a bottomless pit. And this angel, to him was given the key to the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke out of a great furnace. Now watch this. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth, and to them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing. So notice we've been comparing Passover and the plagues and the various things that happen in Passover to the book of Revelation. And in the book of Revelation, one of the plagues was locust. you remember? And the locusts just devoured all of the plant life, all of the vegetation and such. Well, here, these locusts came out of the bottomless pit, and they were commanded not to harm any of the vegetation at all. It says, and to them was given power as the scorpions have power. So sting, to sting. Verse 4, they were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. Now, do you remember in chapter 7, we saw that God sealed 144,000 Jews, 12,000 from each of 12 tribes, and then it talks about this great multitude that came out of the tribulation. And so uh, that's, that's chapter 7 is something of an excursus. It's like an appendix. It's like uh, a section that has uh, other information that add to the understanding of the flow of the text. And so this says that those that had the seal. Now, it didn't specifically say in chapter 7 that that great multitude that we presume includes Gentile believers, not just the Jewish believers. It didn't specifically say that they were sealed, but we get that impression that they came out of the great tribulation. God brought them through and such, and we get this impression that God protected them and preserved them and such. But we know for sure that 144,000 Jews, Jewish believing Jews, who believe in Yeshua, Jesus, that they were sealed. And so this says that they were only given authority. These locusts that came with stingers in their tails were only given authority to, uh, it says, to torment. Let's see. Uh, and they were not given authority 
to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die and death will flee from them. In other words, during the tribulation period, these judgments from God are going to be so severe, people are going to want to die, but not be able to die. Verse 7, the shape of the locust was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. And they had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running into battle. They had tails like scorpions, and there were stings in their tails. Their power was to hurt men five months, and they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name is in Hebrew, Abaddon, but in Greek, his name uh, has the name Apollyon. Now, let's just stop there. So, notice this. This fifth angel, the fifth trumpet blows, and this star comes from heaven to earth, who is an angel that has the, been given the key to the bottomless pit and opens up the bottomless pit, and all these locusts come out with, with tails to sting like scorpions and... Uh, and the ability to torment men for five months. Now, are these real locusts? Well, we don't really know if they're real locusts, but uh, many people speculate. Some people think that this is even modern-day military aircraft, like helicopters and things, and John just didn't know how to describe them because he didn't have the language like helicopter or Apache helicopter, military helicopter, anything like that. But some people speculate that John was seeing this modern-day warfare that was happening, but he described it in terms that he understood and that the first century church would understand. Well, that could be true, but the Bible specifically says that these locusts came out of the bottomless pit. And it doesn't make sense to me that helicopters and modern-day aircraft would be coming out of the bottomless pit. Seems to me like this may very well be something demonic, demons that are coming out. And these are demons that have these shapes and such and these abilities that they've been given specifically for this time to torment uh, people. And notice for five months, I mean, it's all timed out. These judgments are happening. They've been designed by God very intentionally. So look at verse 12. One woe is past. Behold, still two more woes are coming after these things. You remember after the four trumpets that there was a sound, a, a voice that said, uh, woe, 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 four woes have passed, but three more woes or three more warnings, three more severe judgments of these trumpets are coming. And so that was the first one. And so it goes on in verse 13 to say, then the sixth angel sounded. And I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. So we're talking about in heaven. And it says, and the voice was saying, verse 14, to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. Now you remember uh, above the land of Israel, there's a river that sort of goes from uh, northwest and it flows down diagonally to southeast, the great river Euphrates, very popular river even to this day, but a very popular river in Bible days as well. So it says, uh, this voice was saying to the sixth angel, release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year. Notice this was all timed out and planned out. There were four specific angels that were bound and they were released and they were prepared. Notice again, they were prepared for the, let's see. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. Okay, now we have to go back to the sixth chapter, the eighth verse, because you'll remember that in the seals that a fourth of mankind were killed. So we're talking about major population death. 
you know, well, right now, you know, we're pushing toward 8 billion people. Uh, uh, we're not there at the time of this reading, but the population of the earth is pushing toward 8 billion people. So you just figure that if a th- uh, if 25%, if a fourth were killed, that's 2 billion people. Well, this says a third. Now, this is aside the other deaths that happened in much smaller numbers. These are major population deaths that are happening in the tribulation period with these judgments. Well, so if you take it down a fourth or 25%, now you're down to 75% of the original growth. And now this says another third. So that would be down to half. So the earth by this point, excuse me, has about half the population that it did before this tribulation period did because of the judgment of God that is coming in the tribulation. So uh, it, they came at this particular time and they were released to kill a third of mankind. Verse 16. Now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million. 200 million, the number of the army. Now, some people have differing views on this, whether this is a real uh, army of human beings that is now going to march and come across the river Euphrates, or whether these are uh, symbolic, this number is symbolic, or whether these are spiritual beings, in other words, demonic forces and such. But nonetheless, uh, let's just take them uh, at for now as if this is a literal army of 200 million. By the way, I mean, decades ago, China boasted of a 200 million army uh, uh, mass army that they had. And this was decades ago. And of course, their population would support that. So this says, now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million. I heard the number of them. Notice John says, I heard. He, of course, didn't count 200 million, but he said, I heard the number of them. This is how he knew. Verse 17, and thus I saw the horses in the vision. Those who sat on them had breastplates of fiery red, hyacinth, blue, sulfur, Uh, hyacinth blue and sulfur yellow, and the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions. See, this is very interesting and uh, likely part of the reason why some people speculate that these are not real horsemen and real horses because their heads, at least the way John saw them, were like lions. Well, could that have been some kind of uh, array or attire that were for the horses so that they were dressed for battle and such? Well, it could have been. It could have been. So he goes on to say that their heads were like the heads of lions and out of their mouths came fire, smoke and brimstone. Well, this is a pretty interesting horse. Uh, Verse 18. By these three plagues and a third of mankind was killed. This is the third we were talking about. And by by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone, which came out of their mouths for their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for the tails are like serpents, having heads and with them to do harm. So these are some strange creatures that uh, John saw, but these creatures are all designed to either torment or to kill, in this case, to kill. Verse 20, but the rest of mankind who were not killed. So let's just say uh, about 50% or maybe a little less than 50% of the population is left. Listen to what it says. But the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands that they should not worship demons and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. In other words, God, after watching these judgments happen, the remaining population still would not give up their worship, their allegiance to idols of gold and silver and such, the work of men's hands. Instead of honoring and serving God, who clearly is displaying his power, they're still clinging to their idolatry of of worship of things, you know, statues and things, money and such that can't even talk. And so this is a common theme in the Bible. 
prophetically that God will bring up. You're, you're worshiping dumb idols, not dumb in terms of intelligence, but dumb in, in terms of these are made of wood and stone and metals. They can't even talk to you, but I'm your God. I'm talking to you. Why won't you worship me? So this is repeated in the Bible, and, and this theme is picked up here in Revelation. So it says, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. Verse 21, and they did not repent of their murders or their sorceries or their sexual immoralities or their thefts. So he brings out, besides the idolatry, he brings out four more sins. And God is saying, even in the tribulation period, these people, after all these judgments, they're not repenting. They're not repenting. And so that's where we leave it here in chapter 9. And these are relatively short chapters, but loaded with symbolisms, uh, symbolism and also loaded with metaphors and loaded with uh, insight to what the judgments of the book of Revelation, uh, excuse me, of the tribulation period are going to be. So we'll pick it up tomorrow in chapter 10.